Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Venicia or The Woolly Worker and this is The Woolly Worker Knitting Podcast. Although this is not going to be a podcast episode but it will be another special episode, second in the series. I already made a video where I talked about 10 sweaters I really wanted to make this year and this video is about 10 cardigans I want to do. I have a couple more ideas of videos for this series. There's definitely 10 sweater vests. 10 uh, slipovers or vests that I want to do and they're on my Ravelry queue and then there's also obviously going to be 10 summer knits but there's one as well that I think deserves a special video and that's 10 fingering weight sweaters I want to do because I have a, a really quite detailed list on those so if you're interested in those videos then stay tuned maybe subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss a future release if you're a returning viewer, then thank you so much for coming back. I'm so glad that you like this kind of content. I hope that you're following along to the podcast as well. And if you're a new viewer, then yeah, this is a channel where I do both podcast episodes and special videos like this and talk about knitting, basically, is the point of the channel, is to just talk at length about knitting. But this is still the early days of the channel, so I'm always uh, happy to get any feedback if you have any ideas about what's working with this podcast and what's not working then please let me know i want this to be an enjoyable experience for you so maybe grab yourself a drink i'm having orange juice as always and maybe grab yourself some knitting i hope that you've got a project that you're working on i think this video will probably be about around an hour like the usual um so i hope you make some some good progress on your knitting while i chat away about those cardigans that i want to do if you want to follow me on other platforms, then you can follow me on Ravelry or on Instagram at The Woolly Worker. I think I am more active on Ravelry than I, than I am Instagram. I have to remind myself to post on Instagram and my photos aren't always the best quality, first of all. And then there aren't always in chronological order. Uh, I'm trying to kind of fill my Instagram with past nets. Whereas Ravelry, I've been keeping a really good streak of really updating it as soon as I'm starting or finishing a project so definitely follow me on Ravelry if you want and yeah if you want to watch my Instagram stories sometimes I share little snippets of, of my projects and what's going on and I ask questions and you guys have been really helpful so that's been nice to interact with you all on those platforms and then as always if you want to leave a comment on YouTube I also reply to all of those. So I think that's all of the admin out of the way so as always in the videos I really want to make a point of putting all the information either on the screen if I'm not saying it or if I am saying it and then also putting it in the description below I keep those very very detailed and I try and put links where possible so definitely make sure to check the description box if you're looking for any information and then if it's still not in there then feel free to to ask and I'm happy to help I try to list you know yarns colors patterns designers etc so the first section of this video is going to be what am I wearing and I won't go into too much detail because that's not the point of the video but I know people always like to ask and I think it's always nice when I'm filming for a video to wear a, a, a knit that I've made, it. it's a good opportunity. So eagle-eyed viewers might recognize this neckline and raglan and this is the Louvre sweater and I've made it in the same yarn that was recommended in the pattern in the sample that Petite Knit who designed the sweater was wearing. This is made in Pier Gint and this is the color Anthracite, Anthracite 1088 and this is a beautiful uh, top-down sweater. It's a raglan, it's quite uh, deep, it's got that amazing neck. It starts with a tubular cast on which was my first time doing that and I, I really like it and it's, it's extremely flattering how it just flares out on your chest like this and it really just espouses your shape and it's got those really um, big rib sections on the sleeves and I'm not gonna stand up because I'm wearing joggers but the um, length of it is nice as well it's not too long it's not cropped either it's just perfect and yeah I'm really happy with the amount of ease I got on this I wasn't too sure what size to go for as I've said before I'm in between sizes so um, I usually just I don't know I pick at random which size I want to do and then sometimes if I feel very fancy I it depends on the gauge as well, like if I know that my gauge is like a half of a stitch off, then maybe I'd pick the size that would correspond to, to that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to say about the Louvre sweater. The yarn is a little itchy, if I'm uh, completely honest. It's Pyrgen, which is a Norwegian yarn, Danish yarn, I'm so sorry, Scandi yarn. And it's rustic 
and it's a high neck here, funnel neck, so, or mock neck, is that what it's called? So the neck is definitely the area that would be more sensitive. I guess if you really want, you can always like sew it down if you really want it, and then um, you wouldn't have that problem. I can also feel it on my wrists, but I'm wearing a long sleeve top underneath today, and honestly, apart from the neck, I can't really tell that I'm wearing a rustic jumper, and I think I'm trying to slowly ease myself into wearing this more so that I'd not notice it as much. And I definitely feel like this wear is better than, for example, me wearing it the first time I had finished it, if that makes sense. So I'd say don't give up. If you want to try peer again, try peer again. Maybe make yourself a hat or like gloves or something and get used to the rustic feel. But it's quite, it's not too bad, it's affordable. I didn't hold a mohair or anything like that, so the sweater itself was probably maybe between 50 and 60 pounds. I can't remember. But I think that's it for, for what I'm wearing. So let's get into the, 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 the crux of the video. So I've rounded up 10 patterns that I selected for myself. So I'm, I didn't make this list for the purpose of this video. This is just like my normal list. Um, and I'm not saying that those cardigans are the best or that you should make them or anything like that. It was just a really personal list I've made, but I thought I would share it because I, I selected those for a reason. And if you like my knits and you like my choices and my patterns that I've done, then you probably might get some inspiration from this list. So they're not in any particular order. I've really just rounded them up. Um, and the first two that I will talk about, however, I do have the yarn for them. So I'll talk about these first because they're probably going to be the next cast ons in terms of cardigans. And I guess the last thing I need to say is that I've made only one cardigan so far. I've made a lot of sweaters and a lot of vests, but I've not made many cardigans. I've made the Champagne Cardigan by Petite Knit, which I'll try and talk about in a, another video, um, probably when I do my roundup of the year, <laughs> when I get around to filming that. But the reason I don't like making cardigans, I guess it's the same as everyone else, where there's a lot of purling involved. But I've been knitting more and doing those constructions that aren't raglans, for example, drop shoulders, that do involve some flat knitting every now and then for like the front and the back shaping and everything for like for the vests. A lot of the vests have that kind of like start at the back, work your way down the back, pick up for shoulder one, pick up for shoulder two, do the front flat and then join in the round. I actually do a lot of purling anyway, so I've realized maybe I'm not that averse to, uh, that adverse to purling as I thought I was. So why not do cardigans then? So I want to get over my fear of purling, not my fear, but my distaste of it. And I'm sure I'm going to get faster, the same that I am fast at knitting now. Hi everyone, before we get into today's video, I just wanted to do a quick reminder that I'm currently running a giveaway. So all the details for that are in the previous podcast episode, episode three. I'll try and include a little card that you can click on in either corner. Uh, so you can go check that out for how to participate. It's been running for a week so far and it'll be open for another week. So on Monday the 20th of February, I'll be drawing out the winner of the giveaway and then they will receive a free pattern of their choice. So that's very exciting. So I hope that you can join. If you're watching this and it is past that date, then worry not. I am sure I will be running lots of giveaways. So maybe subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future giveaways of patterns or yarn or other gifts. Enjoy! So the first cardigan on the list is the April Cardigan by Petite Knit. It's a really really pretty cardigan. I think it's going to be a really great spring piece, spring summer time. I think it depends on the color you can make it in. I've seen some people do it in like the red squirrel. Red squirrel, squirrel is so hard to say with someone that speaks French like me. Um, and some people have made it in like a rust color or browns beige, so that would be great for autumn as well. But the one that Petite Knit is wearing is like that nice blue and some people have made it in like a sage green and everything and that can be really nice over dresses if you've got some like floral dresses and everything. So this is made with a strand of fingering and a strand of mohair. I'll just use any fingering and any mohair. She uses scentless garn and it's a DK weight. The gauge is pretty uh, usual for her DK pieces, 21 stitches for 28 rows. Um, it's got that ribbed button band and I know some people have done modifications where they've 
made the same button band as the champagne cardigan where they do a double knit but I think I'm just gonna go for the rib so I'll tell you the yarn I got for that and actually this made an appearance in my second podcast episode because I recently bought the mohair for this so I actually had bought flora drops flora and I had bought drops uh, kit silk but I realized that I didn't like kit silk at all so I was kind of stuck with flora but no more here to hold it with. Um, so this is the kind of color scheme I've gone for. You can see it in the bag, but I'll take the balls out. Well, just two of them. So Flora is in beige 07 and Tilia Filcolana is in Chai, which is a new shade and that's 364. So here they're together and yeah, it's looking very golden, caramel, honey, like it's beige, but like a warm beige, which will be interesting. It just feels very comforting almost. Like I just really want to wear this. I want to eat this. But um, I think what I love about this mohair is that the silk thread is golden, which is amazing compared to like the silk threads that are white that you can see sometimes in some of the uh, combinations. So yeah, I'm really excited to do this. I don't know if I have enough mohair. I have four balls. I'm still in two minds about whether to do the extra small or the small for the April cardigan, but I think what I'll do is I'll swatch, see what my gauge is, see if, you know, if I'm not on gauge, am I going to have an oversized or, or a, a tight cardigan and then size up or down, depending on that. But I'll let you know and I'll keep you all updated when I'm doing the podcast because this will definitely make an appearance soon. Uh, yeah, let me know if, if uh, you've done the April cardigan. I know it's a really, really popular pattern, so it's got tons and tons of projects. The next cardigan is from Ozetta, or Haley Smedley, and it's the Field Day cardigan. And it's a really nice cardigan as well. It's a little oversized, drop shoulder. Uh, it's got a nice button band that's... I think you're working the button band at the same time that you're working the cardigan, so there's no picking up stitches afterwards, which would be nice. Because for the champagne cardigan, I remember I had to pick up the stitches, which was a nightmare, and... If you're not really confident, it can seem very daunting and, you know, if, if you mess it up, it would be visible. So, yeah, that one would be the worst at the same time. She has her sample in beige and a lot of people have done it in beige. I didn't know what yarn to use. She suggests using Wolf Folk Stra. It's um, also a DK Way cardigan. But I saw someone using a very affordable yarn from West Yorkshire Spinners, which I like that brand already. But it's a quality I've not used before and it's the Croft. So here it is in the bag. And I've gotten that really recently in an order from Wool Warehouse and I'm so excited to try it. So there it is. It's a grey. I don't know if the colour is pretty accurate right now, but it's going to be... It's quite a, a cold grey that almost goes towards blue, if you really thought about it. And apparently it's made in association with Jameson and Smith, which is a Shetland wool brand. So the Croft, Shetland Colors. This is the color um, Kova. Yeah, 450 Kova. And yeah, I think what I've not done for either of those cardigans is planning the buttons I want to use, but I'll worry about that when it comes to it. And I just need to get the, the body of it done. I don't need to get the buttons anytime soon. So I'm excited about this one. I don't know which one I'll do first. I guess one of them has more hair and the other one doesn't. So I think it'll just maybe depend on my mood and what's the last thing I've done. Because right now on my needles, I've got a sweater with more hair and a sweater without more hair. I kind of like having the choice between the two. So yeah, I think I'll let you know about that yarn and whether it was a good option for that field day cardigan. And I'm really excited to try this Ozetta pattern. I've not made or bought any of her patterns yet. And I'm so excited to try them because she has so many that I love. I love her style. A lot of her samples are greys and beiges, but on Instagram and Ravelry, you can see quite a lot of people going a bit more out there with their color choices. And I think it's always nice to have that choice because, you know, beiges and greys are very wearable, but sometimes it can be cute to have a pop of color, but um, those pieces seem to be quite timeless and staples and cardigans, they can go with everything, you know, it depends on what you've got underneath, like if you've got a beige cardigan on top of something, it doesn't matter what this thing is because beige will just not clash with it. So just something to think about when you think about colors and cardigans. Okay, so the next cardigan is cardigan number eight by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And this is very interesting because I 
knew about the pattern, I had seen it on Ravelry and it didn't catch my eye at all. I, to be honest, did not even like it. It just looked too busy. I think she used sort of like a, a confetti yarn. So this is made with uh, Isagur yarn, Arn Tweed, and then Isagur yarn, Mohair, or Isagur Alpaca One instead of Mohair. But the tweed is the main first strand. And the colors of the tweed, then, yeah, some of them have confetti and some of them don't. So when I first saw this picture, I didn't like it and I didn't want to do it. But I saw the hashtag on Instagram and I started following it and oh my god, some of them are, are, are so amazing. It looks like the coziest thing in the entire world. If I remember to do it, I'll post a picture of some of the Instagram ones that I really liked to give you more of an idea of, of the look I'm, I'm going for. And the one I've settled on in the end is using the iron tweed in the color gray and then alpaca as a strand instead of mohair because usually I'm sensitive to mohair so I'd rather go with something that I know I can tolerate and that strand is also in kind of a light, light gray so I'm going for gray which if you've followed the rest of my videos you probably know that that's I guess my favorite color or like my go-to safe color mm, I like beige as well but I feel like because I'm really pale I'm worried about beige being too close to my skin color or washing me out or you just need like not popping but with gray I feel like it's safer and I don't know much about color and color theory so I just feel like there's colors that I know are safe uh, but I'm experimenting so I'm sure I will come upon a gray that I don't like and I'm sure I'll come upon a, a beige that I really like I'm really curious to see if that Tilia color chai for the April Thargan if that's gonna maybe like give me a glow as well or make me look less pale or will it make me more pale we'll see uh but the cardigan number eight i'm very excited to do this the only reason i haven't bought the yarn yet is because first of all it's quite pricey iron tweed is iron so it's pricey and there's not a lot of meterage so you have to buy i think seven or eight balls which is a lot and then you have to buy the alpaca or the mohair i think it would be even more expensive with mohair but don't quote me on that so you're looking at over a hundred pounds, definitely, for the cardigan. And I just want to make sure that I'm set on the colors, but I'm pretty sure I want to go with those colors because I don't want to buy a hundred pounds worth of a color that I'm not going to wear. And then I need to find that because my local yarn shop, the last time I checked in their stock, they only had six or seven balls of iron and I need seven or eight. So I don't know if I should just, you know, dialots, I guess, are important, but maybe with tweeds, they aren't as much. But don't, don't use that and then blame me if, if you're, project has big stripes but I think maybe if it was just for me maybe I would just buy the six balls and then if I do need the seventh one you know like a month down the line I would just go to another store and buy that and finish the sleeves or the ribbing and it probably would be fine especially if you've got like the mohair or the alpaca to mask that stripe were one to happen but I don't know I mean there's no rush that's that's the thing right I could buy six balls of yarn now and then have them in my stash waiting for the set to be complete or I can just work on all the other cardigans and then if I ever come upon uh, eight balls of the grey iron tweed, then I'll buy them there and then. Do you have that where you want to have the yarn with you like right away, even though you know that you're not going to knit with it because you've got other things? Or are you very disciplined and you're only buying the yarn at the last minute, you know, like when you know that you're going to cast on that day or the next day? I wish I was the second type of person, but unfortunately I've got a lot of yarn in the stash that isn't gonna get knitted up soon because there's too much. So the, the way of this is not DK, it's iron plus lace, which is bulky. So hopefully it'll knit up quite fast. I think I could have fun with the buttons there. If I'm making it in gray, maybe having some like wooden buttons could be cool. But I have kept an eye on, you know, the local yarn shops online that have a special tab for buttons. Some of them look really, really cool, like vintage ones. I saw one that I loved. It looked like gears, like robot gears. I really want that. Okay, so the next one, I think number four, is the Chantilly Cardigan from Laura Penrose, from Penrose Knits. And I have this pattern, I bought it when she released it. I think she designed it quite a while ago, but she only released it in September last year. It was a, a long testing period, and she released the Chantilly vest at the same time, because they have the same kind of construction where it's a drop shoulder, but then the cardigan has sleeves. And I didn't know which one to get, but in the end I went for the cardigan, and because I think yeah, I wanted to make more cardigans and I already have lots of vests. 
I really like the frilly look. I think she's got she's got all the souffles, you know, if you know her, you know what I'm talking about. She's got that, that ruffle thing for souffles. So it's kind of her signature look. But I liked how a bit more subtle it looked on this, but it's got a really big collar, which a lot, like none of my vests or knits have a collar like that. So I'm really excited to do that construction. I'm a bit daunted by the blocking involved. I think you need pins and everything to make it work. And usually when I block my knits, I just lay them flat. But we'll see how we get on. Uh, the reason I haven't bought yarn for this is because I don't know what yarn to get. She calls for Lana Gato Silk Mohair and Filka Lana Saga held together. So it says lace and light fingering and light, light fingering to make an iron weight. But I think basically the body of the cardigan and the collar and the ruffle all use different weights. So at some points you're holding two strands, at some points you're only holding one, etc. Which is, it makes it a bit harder to substitute then because you have to really think about that as opposed to just like fingering and mohair held throughout the entire time at the same rate. And also I don't know what color to pick. So again, if I could do this without mohair, I probably would want to, but I don't know if it's doable because of the fact that at some point you're only holding mohair. Um, I could maybe try with alpaca, I want to do that. Or I would splurge and get a very nice silky mohair. Like the Lang, the Lang lace is a really good mohair. It's like your silk mohair I like and Tilia I like. Maybe I could try a mohair substitute like Camarosa Midnight Soul and or Nalpaka strand from Isagur or something. So there are options, but I think there's not that many projects on Ravelry. There's only 27 as of today and we're at the end of January, but there's some more examples on Instagram. So I think I've just been keeping an eye using like following the hashtag on Instagram. And then every now and then you see someone else making a new one and I'm keeping my eyes peeled for someone who uses a good yarn combination that I like that is accessible to me and if they did it and described that it worked well for them, I probably would just copy that yarn selection. And then color wise, uh, the sample is made in this lilac color. Someone has made it in a sage green, which I've had like sort of, a, an, I've been wanting to make something sage green for myself. So the April cardigan is gonna be beige. If I were to make a second April cardigan, I've been wanting to maybe do a light blue or a light green, but maybe I should save the sage green for the Chantilly cardigan. I think with a white t-shirt, they all look so good, those pastel colors. But again, we could play just we, we could just play it safe and we could just do um someone has done it in black, I think. And also the fun thing with that is you can make the color and the ruffle or either or in a different color. So you can have a little pop of color for the ruffle, but everything else is like a un unified color. So a very exciting project. Nothing I've ever seen before, very unique, and I think it's just a matter of finding the right yarn for it, but once I do I will definitely cast this on and I'm excited and I've not done any, I've done Laura's um, headband pattern before and I really liked it, but I've not made any of her garments before. So I want to try one of those to see, um, see what it's like. Okay. The next pattern, number five, is the Viveka cardigan. And that one again has only 13 projects on Ravelry. It's from my favorite things knitwear, but it was so big on Instagram when it came out. It was a collaboration with Ayu? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but they provided the yarn and my favorite things knitwear designed it. And all the testers, almost all of the testers received that yarn and I've tried to see if I could get my hands on it and it doesn't look very likely. So I don't think as much as I would really want to copy like the pattern recommendation, like the suggested yarn, because it just makes it easier and I know exactly the look it would give. I don't think I can get some IU and it would be pricey as well. But I don't know what else to substitute it for. And because there's not that many projects, then there's not much inspiration. So again, I'm just waiting. And maybe a year down the line, there will be more projects. But it's brioche. It is half fisherman's rib, which I prefer than brioche. By the way, they both look the same, but they're worked differently. So if you prefer brioche, then I'm sure there would be some cardigans that look the same, but they're worked in brioche. But this is half fisherman's rib, it's oversized. It looks like the chunkiest, squishiest, stretchiest fabric ever. It looks amazingly cozy. It's got pockets. We love pockets. And it doesn't have mohair, so hopefully it would make it a bit less expensive. And also 
definitely more wearable and not itchy for people who are sensitive to mohair. It's boxy, it's like, like a boyfriend look, it's got a v-neck, double knitted edge. Oh, it looks, it looks great. And it's kind of like a, a wish list thing where I, I just know it's going to be a huge item. Would take a lot of yarn because half fisherman's rib eats up a lot of yarn because when you're working two rows it just looks like one little V, um, like row wise. So it would take a lot of time and yarn and yarn, but I really want it. Instagram made me want it. But as you'll see further down this list, there's a couple more of cardigans that have that style, either brioche or half fisherman's. And I don't know if I need to have three jackets like that. So maybe I'll just make one of the other ones and then just keep this one on the back burner for a future project. Obviously I could do them in different colors so they don't all look the same. But yeah, that one I really, really liked. Okay, number six is the Maya cardigan. And this is a free pattern. Yes, it is a free pa pattern by Helene Magnussen. And you probably have heard of this before because it's free, like a lot of people have done it. It's really good for, uh, it fits your first color work, but most importantly, it's actually really good if it's your first steak because this is actually done in the round and steaked, which can be really scary. And it's something that I've not done actually ever. So that cardigan would be a really good milestone to do and practice the steak because there's a few patterns I want to do from like, uh, Mary Wallen and Shetland kind of books that also talk about sticking, but I think I'd rather practice first. So that one is made with Istex Let Lopi, but you can probably substitute that. Yeah, some people have done it with Cascade Yarn, Nepal. Well, although having said that, you really need to make sure that the yarn is uh, sticky and catches itself so that the stick don't unravel. Some people who can sew will sew a reinforcement or you can crochet a reinforcement. There's always tips and tricks to make sure that the stick is as secure as it can be. But if you're using a yarn like Istex Let Lopi, people have said before that you don't even need those reinforcements because it is that secure. And yarn has a tendency to not want to unravel in that way, but it unravels like vertically. You know, if you ever dropped a stitch on a very slippery yarn, you know how fast that bad boy can ladder down. Whereas if you were to cut the yarn, maybe nothing, like just nothing would happen. Everything just stays exactly where it is and, and, and unless you move it around. So I don't know, because I've said before, I'm obviously I'm sensitive to, to some mohair, sensitive to really scratchy wool. I don't think I'm ready for let lopi, but it would be really like good and affordable. It would be like a practice cardigan, a practice stick, a practice let lopi. Although having said that, I'm also very inspired by Rebecca from the Crea Bea, who did hers as a sweater and she did not stick. I also think that this is made from the bottom up and Rebecca did hers top down, which I think I feel experienced enough now that I'd be able to fudge it up and do it top down. I think I would much, much prefer doing it top down. So I'd make it top down and then either stick it or keep it as a cardigan, as a sweater. She made hers, she made one of them in like dark gray and white, which looks really nice and neutral. And then she's also made a cardigan later on and she made it red and white, which was very wintry and Christmassy. And some people have done beautiful variants. With the color work, you can really, you can either follow the original pattern and you can, you know, use, I think there's four or five different colors and you can place them at, at that same spot. Or you can just make it by color uh, some of them are in shades of blue, some of them are in shades of grey. There's one here that I'm seeing that is like red for the main colour and it's got like different variations of white, greys and black for the rest. So I think, yeah, picking maybe like one colour and the rest of them being shades of grey could be really pretty. So I'll have a think about whether I want to get Let Lopi for that. Like I said, I want to try out things and it would be good as a trial run, but I also want to be conscious of not buying Let Lopi, making an entire cardigan and never wearing it because it's too itchy and I knew all along that that was going to happen because that just seems like a bit of a waste maybe. But maybe I could also give it to a charity shop and make someone's day by having a nice knitted cardigan. I'm sure it would be of good quality and obviously that yarn would keep you extremely warm. And just because I can't wear it doesn't mean that other people can't wear it. But then I don't know if also, I've, I've, never, I've never given it a, a knit to a charity shop before, so I don't know if I actually have it in me to do that. So the next one is cardigan number five by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And thank God I've got all those 
on my screen up there otherwise I would never remember those numbers I don't know why they named their patterns like that it's very confusing and uh, anyway so cardigan number five again that did not catch my eye at all when I first saw it from her pattern pictures and like her version but it was on Instagram that I saw someone the knitting Norwegian I'll put her profile below and on the screen I absolutely love her account I think she lives in France and she's Norwegian but she posts her captions in English and everything so like it's fine to follow not that you necessarily need the language you can just follow whatever accounts you want it's just photos but I like to have the information on the yarn and she made this one and she made a few changes so she made a double knitted band instead of that uh, rib band that I can see here on the cardigan number five uh, she made it more oversized and she picked that most amazing color from Knitting for Olive. I think she did it in dusty petroleum blue, which is so, so, so gorgeous. It looks like a jean jacket kind of vibe, like, yeah, jean. So this is normally lace and DK held together, so like mohair and DK, which makes it a worsted weight. And it's brioche. So that one would not be fisherman's rib, it would be brioche. So I guess when I was saying earlier, like the Viveka cardigan, they don't exactly have the same look, but like they kind of have the same look. The Viveka has pockets, this one doesn't, but they kind of have the same shoulder construction as well, it looks like, but I could be wrong. But they would both be very different knitting experiences because one has you knit below for fisherman's rib and one has you like knit with the slipovers and like yarn overs and stuff like for brioche. So yeah, just keep in mind that. And yeah, the, the Knitting Norwegian, she actually was very generous and she put the modifications that she did on one of her Instagram posts. So I saved that post and if I were to make this cardigan, and I hope to do, I probably would use the same color and I would use the same modifications because why change perfection? Hers was just so inspiring. And this is why I love Instagram because I don't think her project is on Ravelry or maybe it is. If it is, I'll link it below so you can just see it directly. Um, but you know, sometimes people do really, really wonderful things over on Instagram and it doesn't always make its way to Ravelry. That's why it's really good to follow the hashtags on Instagram. And yeah, so that's a couple of patterns now from my favorite things knitwear that I didn't like from just Ravelry, but that other people have inspired me to do because of their ver versions of, of the pattern. So for that, I would probably use the Knitting for Olive. I think the Knitting Norwegian did hers in double soft merino, which is now discontinued, but I have a very strong feeling that Knitting for Olive heavy merino is the equivalent, like they've replaced that. that. I'm not too sure about content differences, but color palettes and everything is going to be the same thing. So I'll just do it in heavy merino and then mohair. I think Knitting Norwegian used Isiger mohair, which I know I like, so I probably would do that. Although the Knitting for Olive soft silk mohair has been praised for being very soft and more tolerable for people that have sensitivities. So I've yet to do a garment with soft silk mohair and knitting for olive merino, but that will probably happen soon. So I'll see if I can tolerate that. And if I can, then that's too bad for my wallet because that's a, another brand that I can buy mohair from. Okay, cardigan number eight is gonna be very different than all of the previous ones. And I'm really happy to be including that one because Anything that's kind of Shetland wool related, I feel very proud to be putting that in my podcast from Scotland. And this is the Yell Cardigan by Mary Wallen. I knew she was going to make an appearance. So it's, it's amazing. It is from her book Shetland, which I actually have. I'll show it to you. Here we have it. So Shetland by Mary Wallen. And it's a collection of patterns. There's a few cardigans, a few sweaters a cowl, a hat. I think you can buy all of the patterns um, on Ravelry as single patterns. And then this is the yellow cardigan right there. And what's great as well when you buy this book is that you can also ask the designer to send you a PDF because the charts in the book, I'm not gonna lie, they're very detailed and they're very small and they're like, they're not in color, so it's symbols. and. I guess there's two different school of thoughts where you either like or you don't like having um, like, you know, those, those symbols instead of having colors. Um, and I really like this pattern already on its own. I was gonna make it that way, but then I, again, saw someone completely blow me away 
that modified the colors and you probably know her because she's really big in the podcast world and design world and this is 100 acre wools and her version is so stunning she used a collection of pinks and greens she changed all the colors i think and i can't even imagine the amount of work that went into making a new color palette and getting all the right contrast and everything and she used shetland wool you know the jameson and smith spin rift or the jameson and smith um heritage jumper weight basically all, all of those they, they're kind of all interchangeable and have the same gauge so she lists all of the colors that she used which is amazing and i think what i would maybe do if i were to redo that is change her greens for some blues i would try really really hard to get the exact amount of contrast maybe use like black and white filters to help me out with that because i do like green but i think blue suits me better and then blue and pink, blue and purple, and that kind of gray main color would be really, really pretty together. Like, let me know what your thoughts are, but I think my vision would be her cardigan, but with blue instead of green. And I have heard things though about the sort of, not the button bands, but the kind of color that goes all the way, the flaring out and being a little like wanting to curl up or curl over. So some people have offered like suggestions on how to stop that. I think this is steaked as well, by the way. So yeah, I, I really, really would prefer doing the Maya cardigan, which seems much simpler and is in thicker yarn. And then if my steak fails, then at least I know. Rather than doing this behemoth of a project, the Yale cardigan with the fingering weight yarn, and then my steak not working out. I think for hers as well, she... To, she sewed like a ribbon on the inside on the, the like the stick which looks great someone has made I'm looking on Ravelry someone has made a, a very long jacket version of it which is so stunning as well if you have the time please go check out the Yell cardigan page on Ravelry and see people's versions of it because it's a work of art a labor of love not something I see myself doing like soon I guess I, I still have a lot of things to master or get better at before I do that including like color substitution like I said that it's not something that I, I find myself very good at so I, I want to learn more and practice more before substituting colors and, and then not being happy and also something that I've noticed recently using a lot of other people's patterns as opposed to petite net when I first started out I was basically just doing petite net and I got so used to them and now that I'm branching out and seeing the way that other people like designers write patterns sometimes can be quite confusing and I'm not used to having more details or having less details and it throws me off and I've used charts before but again like not those symbol charts that Mary Wallen offers so it seems very daunting to be doing that kind of cardigan steaked color work like all over color work cardigan um, from a pattern designer that you've never done anything from before so maybe I'll do Mary Wallen's cowl before or something like that like a cowl she's also got a lot of free patterns Mary Wallen on Ravelry like there's some home decor there's some sweaters she does lace as well if you're not into color work you can also make just like nice Shetland wool cardigans or jumpers but anyway I digress so I'm a bit daunted by this this seems like if I was able to do that it would be one of the best things like ever but I also am scared and also the last thing I guess is that it's less wearable I have no idea what I would wear this with it's kind of like a kimono style I don't know would I wear a t-shirt a top a camisole jeans like you know I, I don't know and I don't know if I would wear it out like for occasions or to go to work you know would it be around the house it would just feel too special but I don't know that one is, is a maybe, but I really wanted to include it in the list because it has been on my Ravelry queue for ages. Okay, so we've got two more. The next one is a November jacket by Petite Knit. And it will look very similar then to the Viveka cardigan. So it's also that kind of like brioche stitch and it's it's got pockets and it's very chunky and bouncy. And that one is brioche, not half fisherman's. So again, if you have a preference for one of those stitches, then let that guide your decision. And so that, that's it in terms of those styles of sweaters. So I realize now there's three cardigans in this video that are brioche or half fisherman, and I don't need all three. So I probably won't end up making all of these, 
but they all have their qualities and, and like advantages and disadvantages. And that one is also made in Sennes Garn Pyrgans, which I'm wearing now. And again, like I said at the beginning when I was wearing this, is at first when I first bought the yarn, I was really shocked at how dry and rustic it was. The swatch did soften up after blocking and was more drapey. And so the, the sample, once I finished it up, it was fine. It was like softer, but still not a soft sweater. So this wouldn't be a soft cardigan. And I was kind of having this idea in my head of a cardigan that would be very, very cozy and soft. And I could just wrap myself up in a, in a hug. Whereas this one seems more like a jacket that you'd wear outside, you know, to keep you very warm. And maybe you wouldn't need a coat. Maybe, yeah, you're like going to the shop and you don't want to put your jacket, so you just put that on, put your keys and your phone in those little pockets and you're good to go. So she made it in Pyrgant and it's Ironway 10 ply, which is confusing because I thought Pyrgant was DK. Yeah, Pyrgant is DK, but they're saying that the weight of this cardigan is iron. Uh, the gauge is 15 stitches and 44 rows in brioche. When I look at the project pages on Ravelry, people have had success with Drops Charisma, which is so affordable. And I've had a look at that and I still don't know. I feel like for such a big project that would take so long, I think I'd rather go for Pure Gant because I feel like it would be more sturdy and durable and withstand the weather better and stuff like that whereas charisma would be softer maybe it would peel more or for sure it would peel more and with friction and everything i don't know i just maybe i'm being a bit too uppity but maybe i don't trust drops charisma for a jacket but the colors look nice i've seen some people do it with very nice neutrals like light grays i've seen someone do it in that kind of jeans color like deep petroleum blue which looks really nice i think i would go for a dark gray or a light gray, call me boring if you want, but it would just be timeless. So this one, I've not really had too much of a look on Instagram. I've only really followed it on Ravelry, so I'm sure Instagram might have more inspiration for the, for the colors. Um, some people have used Knit Picks, Drops Lima, Pure Gint, Cascade, I don't know. I guess I'm still in two minds about that. So I guess as we're going down this list of cardigans, the first ones, I have decided on almost all the factors and I have the yarn ready. Whereas the more we're going towards the end of this list, I don't even know if I want to make them. I just really like them. And because I said before, cardigans are a bit more of a task for me because of the purling and losing motivation and having to like sew on the buttons at the end and pick up for the button band and all of those extra tasks. I just feel like I'm, I'm not going to make them as much as sweaters. So the cardigans I do pick, I want to make sure I really, really like and I'm really, really sure that I want them because they require more effort. And lastly, to tie us over for the number 10, it's the Balloon Cardigan by Petite Knit. So I'm currently knitting the Balloon Sweater by Petite Knit and I'm using the color Marzipan, Filcolana Arweta and Snow White, Filcolana Tilia. So it's very light and beige and, and, and yeah, very nice and light. But the Balloon Cardigan, I feel like maybe I could make it in like a like chocolate brown or like an ochre mustard color or even a black, a black balloon cardigan would be amazing. So yeah, I was thinking at first I didn't know whether I wanted to buy both patterns and I still haven't bought the balloon cardigan one because I'd rather buy it closer to the time when I'm sure I'm going to make it. But yeah, I didn't know, do I want both a balloon cardigan and a balloon sweater? But I think if I make them a very different color, then it'll just be a very different purpose that they serve. That one is also made with Arweta and Tilia, for example, so lace and fingering to get a DK. So again, you can maybe also get some brushed alpaca. That could be nice because the balloon effect and the kind of brushed alpaca fuzz and, and fuzziness could all contribute to making it look extra cozy. You don't really need the stitch definition, which you lose with brushed alpaca. It's got a lot of projects on Ravelry. People have used uh, Drops Flora, Tin Silk Mohair, Knitting for Olive. A lot of people have used brushed alpaca. But yeah, it's pretty standard. Yeah, I'm really liking the samples here on Ravelry that are kind of brown colors. Um, there's a, a rust one that's really nice. There's another kind of blue gray one. 
but yeah, one is made in Red Squirrel from Phil Kalana, which is a very popular um, colorway. You ever get when you're scrolling on Ravelry and you're finding projects and then you click on one because it catches your eyes and then you realize it's already in your favorites? Because I just did that. I clicked on the Red Squirrel and it's already in my favorites because I had loved that project. So I, I apparently keep coming back to the same people and I'm very consistent. So yeah, I think I probably won't do that too soon because I've I'm already doing the balloon sweater and I like to have variety in my knits. I don't like doing the exact same thing uh, too close together. By the way, I've never even knitted the same thing twice. Um, I buy a lot of patterns and I make them and I justify it by saying, oh, I'm paying, you know, five pounds for this sweater, but I'll make it twice and then it's like almost 250 per sweater. But then once I'm done making a sweater, I'm like, oh, I'm so bored of it, I want to make a new one. Because I really want to make another Louvre sweater, like this is so so good. And again, as I've been sp speaking here for an hour, like I've completely forgotten that I was wearing it. And I'm wondering now, when I'm watching the footage later, am I going to notice that I was like scratching my neck the whole time? But I don't think I was. And I made it in an entrance set like that, but it would be really nice in a light grey or a greyish. Like something light would be really nice, but I really like it in this dark. I think this is like just a perfect amount of like charcoal looking thing where it's not like pure black but anyway off topic so I think that's pretty much it for the cardigans I had run it up in my previous video the sweaters I wanted to make I cheated and I added like special contenders at the end where I listed even more sweaters but I don't have that for cardigans because those were the only 10 on my list and three of them were very similar so clearly I have this like goal that I'm striving for it's like a brioche cardigan but let me know what you thought. Were any of those cardigans on your list? Was, um, have you made any of them and you've got like tips? Have you got any ideas for the ones I said I didn't know what yarn to use or what substitution to do? Do you like making cardigans or do you prefer making sweaters? I have a feeling that people prefer making sweaters, but that could just be me <laughs> projecting. I don't really want to give myself a goal of, oh, you need to have knitted three of those by the end of the year, because that'll just stress me out but it would be really nice to add one more cardigan to my collection as opposed to just the one I've got so the one I have the yarn for I'm very excited the one by Ozetta I'm really really excited to do because I've not done that designer yet so it would be nice and also it doesn't have mohair and I'm always always on the lookout for non-mohair substitutions because it's just simpler and it's also cheaper <laughs> which means you can buy more yarn afterwards for even more more projects if you liked that video, then please consider uh, hitting the subscribe button, maybe the notification bell, like and comment, just, you know, any kind of interaction or uh, feedback is just really nice and it encourages me to make more videos. I was so excited to film this video today because that first video with the sweaters was received really, really well by the community and so many comments and interactions with people like it felt like a real back and forth of people like sharing ideas and giving their suggestions. People have um, made me, you know, discover new designers and, and, and give me good, good advices in terms of picking colors and picking patterns. So I hope that this happens again for this video. And like I said in the intro, I'm motivated to make a, a couple more of these because I, I have more lists that again are just for me, but I thought why not share them. Uh, and let me know as well if, if 10 is a good number. I know it's so random because, you know, it could be 9, it could be 11. Would you like less and for me to go more into detail about those items? Or would you like me to make lists that are longer, like 20 cardigans or 20 summer tops? Just what's a good, what's a good number? If you've enjoyed this content, then feel free to talk about it or share it. Uh, word of mouth can be really nice or a little tag on Instagram in your story. That would be really nice. And that way I know that you're watching and it, it really helps. So I hope that you made some good progress on whatever you were working on. Uh, I am quite tired after speaking and feeling the strain on my cheekbones, but I'm very excited. This has made me very eager to cast on a couple of those cardigans and eager to research some of those a bit more on Instagram to get inspiration for yarn substitutions. Happy knitting! Yeah.